Let's start with our standard definition of a linear system. x dot equals ax plus bu. y equals cx plus du. And x at time 0 is equal to some constant x0. And here a, b, c, and d are in the real numbers. And x is a time varying signal, x of t. Also u is a time varying signal, u of t. Which means, of course, that y is a time varying signal, y of t. So with this definition, we can make a claim. So here's our claim. I claim that the solution x of t to this ordinary differential equation x dot is equal to e to the at times x0 plus the integral from 0 to time t of e to the a of t minus tau times b u of tau d tau. So if this were true, then we would have two kinds of responses sort of buried in this system. So the first would be here. So this is the response due to the initial state. And then we have a response that's due not to the initial state, but to the input. We see this repeatedly in systems that we're describing with differential equations, that we have sort of a transient response, a response due to the, what we had when we provided our first input, uh, to when we sort of started with the system at a time t0, and then how it responds to the waveform afterwards. So this is the solution, x of t, to the state equation when x0 is the value of the x at time 0. So how can we check that this is the correct solution? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is check if x of t satisfies the constraint in the differential equation. And if that turns out to be true, then we'll check if x of t satisfies the initial condition. So this is straight out of how you check whether a solution is valid in your ordinary differential equations class. So let's go ahead and try to show this. So first, let's check out point 1. So recall that x of t is equal to e to the at x0 plus some integral from 0 to t of e to the at minus tau b u of tau d tau. So since we're checking to see whether x dot equals something, let's go ahead and take the derivative of our solution, d of x, dt. So if we do this, the derivative of this part is a e to the at
times x0, because x0 is just a, a constant value. And then we have to take the derivative of this integral, 0 to t, e to the a, t minus tau, b, u of tau, d tau. So you have to take the derivative with respect to time. So if we'd like to do this, we can recall a really convenient result from Leibniz. So the Leibniz formula is the following. If we have the time derivative of some integral from beta of t to alpha of t of some function f of t tau d tau, so this is a multivariable, fun multivariable function, then this is the same as the derivative of alpha of t dt times f of t tau evaluated at tau equals alpha of t minus the derivative of beta of t with respect to tau with respect to time f of t tau evaluated at tau equals beta of t plus the integral of beta of t from beta of t to alpha of t of the partial of f of t tau with respect to t times d tau. So this is the derivative of an integral where the limits are themselves time varying. And by the way, that is what we have here. We have a time varying integral, the derivative with respect to time, of a function of time that is integrated when multiplied by a function of tau. So that's this part here is our function f of t, sorry, f of t tau. t is our function alpha of t, and 0 is our function beta of t. So now we actually get some pretty nice things that happen when this falls out. Right, so uh, so we have a e to the alpha t times x zero, which we still had before. Right, so we we know that we have this part here. So now we can take the derivative with respect to time of t times f of t, and then times b of t times dt. So let me rewrite this in a slightly different way. So now we have x dot of t, which was, sorry, so we had d of x of t dt equals x dot of t. So we remember that we had a e to the a t times x zero, and then we're going to be adding to this the first part, so the derivative of alpha of t with respect to time. So that's just a 1. And then we multiply this by our function of t and tau evaluated at tau equals alpha t. So we evaluate tau is equal to 1 here. So that's nice. So we have the input u of 1 and e to the a t minus 1. So that's going to give us 1 times e to the a times t minus tau, but tau is equal to t, so we have t minus t times u of t. So this is going to be 0 oh, times b u of t. 
So this exponent is going to be 0, which is going to give us that e to the 0 is going to just be equal to 1. And then we're going to subtract away, again, on this side. The derivative of b with respect to time is just a 0, so we don't have to evaluate anything here. So minus 0. And then plus the integral from 0 to t, if we go back and look at what we have here. The integral from beta of t, which is 0, to alpha of t, which is t, of the partial of f of t tau with respect to time. So that derivative is a e to the a of t minus tau, because that's the derivative of e to the a t minus tau with respect to time, times b u of tau t tau. So if we simplify this a little bit, we see that x dot of t is equal to a times e to the a t x zero plus the integral from zero to t of e to the a of t minus tau times b of u of tau d tau. So we have, now if we'd like to separate this a little bit further, oh, and we forgot that we still have this nice piece up here. So this is the value times a plus b times u of t. So x dot of t is equal to a times x of t plus b times u of t. So this gives us the idea that that candidate x of t actually satisfies the ODE constraint that we had on x dot equals ax plus bu. So that's point one. Perfect. Now let's move on to talking about point two. So for point two we have to show that the initial conditions are satisfied. So if we have x of t equal to e to the a t times x zero plus the integral from zero to t of e to the a of t minus tau times b u of tau d tau. So now let's just see what x of zero is equal to. So x of zero is equal to e to the 0 times x0 plus the integral from 0 to 0 of e to the a 0 minus tau b u of tau d tau. But this is going to be 0. This is going to be 1. So we can see that x of 0 is just equal to x0. So this shows point two. And this concludes our proof of the claim. So now we know that x of t equals e to the a t times x zero plus the integral zero to t e to the a times t minus tau times b u of tau d tau is indeed the solution to x dot equals a x plus b u with initial condition x zero equals x at time zero.